Father, we ask you just to anoint the word today. We acknowledge you in all of our ways. I don't lean on my understanding today, but I put my trust in you, that you will anoint me to say whatever it is you want to say to your people today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I have a hard time, y'all know, sitting and sitting there looking at my notes. And if I start looking at my notes, it actually kind of gets me off because I don't have just an outline. I've just got my scriptures and stuff. But today, I've been, I've been thinking this week about the fathers, of course, making that video and going through hundreds of pictures and doing it that. But I've been thinking about the inheritance that God has given to us. The scripture, I think the first scripture that, uh, well, let's just go ahead and put the first scripture I gave you up there. I think it's Colossians. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, that means fit, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Is there more to that? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now let's go back one. I wish we could get that whole scripture on one. But anyway, um, we're going to give thanks today. We have a reason to give thanks, don't we? We've already been giving thanks. We've been praising him. But I love this. He says he has made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We have been given an inheritance. Did y'all really realize that? We have been. Now, I'm just going to run through some other scriptures here. Um, they're not going to go up on the board. But let me just read you. As I, st- I looked up the word inheritance, and I was amazed. This is just a few of them. And I'm just going to read one out of, the, out of the, uh, the New Testament here. In Ephesians 1, 16, it says, Cease not to give thanks. There's that thanksgiving again. For you. This is Paul speaking. He said, I make mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Paul was always praying for the people of God. So he prayed for them to have wisdom and revelation and knowledge. He said, and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what's the hope of his calling and the riches of glory of the inheritance in his saints. That is exceeding greatness of his power toward us that believe according to his mighty power. So this inheritance that we have here, he's talking about, first of all, we just heard there, we're the inheritance, we have inherited a kingdom, the kingdom of light. Here he says we've we've inherited um, a calling, riches of his glory, and great power. These are things that we have inherited. Acts 26 and 18 says, Open their eyes and turn to them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. First Peter says, Blessed be the Lord God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us and given us an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, that scripture right there kind of used to kind of confuse me. And I think a lot of people today live like the inheritance that's been given to us is a city in the sky somewhere. We think that the inheritance is heaven. But if you really look at this, he's talking over and over. He says now the inheritance has been given. And let me tell you why. Do you realize before somebody gives an inheritance, before you get an inheritance, a family inheritance, somebody has to die? Is that right? They die, and then they get, you get an inheritance. They open, then they probate the will. The scripture says, Hebrews 9, 15, 17, he says, For this cause he's a mediator, talking about Jesus, of the New Testament by means of death. They which are called, so that they which are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there also must be the necessity of the death of, death of the testator. For a testament is not in force until men are dead. Otherwise, there's no strength of it while the testator lives. Now, I'm getting somewhere. While Jesus walked around with his apostles, they had not received the inheritance yet because the testator had not died. If you look at the New Testament, really what that means, testament, it says last will and testament. That's what that is. It's his will. It's his testament, the inheritance telling us why he died. When people die, you get inheritance. He says, so as long as he was alive, there couldn't be an inheritance given. 
He told us the very first scripture we read up there, if you go to the second, one, second part of that scripture, he said the inheritance of the saints in light is what? It's a kingdom. We have been given the kingdom. So the kingdom is not just something that you're going to get when you die. When Jesus died, he said, now I give you the kingdom. But what he has given us when he died, the, ki- the, the apostles wasn't living in the kingdom yet. They were walking around with Jesus. But he said, I'm with you, but I shall be in you. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. It means it's right here. You can, all, you can touch it. If you touch Jesus, you touch the kingdom. But Jesus had to die, and when he died, the testament opened up. Now the will was. Now what we've been given, all that inheritance I've just reading you, all those things, it's not talking about heaven pie in the sky one day. And yes, we're going to have that, hallelujah, by and by. But right now, we have already got an inheritance. He's already died, and he gave it to us. As soon as he died, then he went away. He went up there, and he sprinkled the blood, and then he came back in the form of the Holy Ghost, didn't he? He sent us the promise. That was our inheritance, that now we're not alone. He came, and he walks, he talks with us, and we have all these things that I was just reading about, this exceeding greatness of his power. Um, We have purpose. We have right here, I didn't read them all. He said, we have forgiveness of sins. We have sanctification. We have an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. The the, uh, thieves can't steal this inheritance. He says, this is inheritance that the moths don't, you know, you can leave it over and the moths don't get it. We have been given all these things to us right now. It's not for later, it's now. We've been talking a lot about the kingdom. And I started thinking about a story of two sons. It's very familiar in the Bible. But we usually talk about these boys in a different way. But it's, it's the story that we call the prodigal son. Everybody knows about them two brothers? The, the younger one was the most famous one. Because, but really, this is about two brothers, and it is about going away and coming back. But it's also about inheritance. Whoa, falling off my chair here. There was um, this young man, for whatever reason, he lived in this father's house. Apparently, it was a quite wealthy father. He had servants. He had land. He had money. And so one day, this young son comes up to his daddy, and he says, I want to have my inheritance now. I want you to give me what's mine. Now, I don't know. It doesn't tell us why he decided that. There's a, a lot of young people, they get about 17, 18 years old. Well, I'm 18 now. I'm ready to do it on my own, daddy. I got this. Give me what's mine, and I'm going to go out, and I'm going to do what I want to do with it. And the father said, okay, it's yours, it's yours, so he gave it to him. Now, we know the story, what the young man did. It said he went out to a foreign land. He went away. And I don't know if he had an argument with his daddy. I don't know what happened, that he was estranged from his father. But he went away, a long way off. And so he said he spent his inheritance on riotous living. Now, I don't know what riotous living back there, but he just partied it up is what he did. Now, his older brother, a little bit later, said to Daddy, he said, Daddy, he took your money and spent it on harlots. Now, I don't know if he did or not. His brother accused him of that. But we know he had party-hearty life. And he might have gave his brother some insight about what he did. But all I know is he was out there spending his money on some wild women and whiskey, probably. I don't know if they had whiskey back then. But whatever it was, the, the young man took his money and he squandered it. Do you know what he could have done? He could have took that money and invested it. He could have bought some property. He could have got married. He could have have done a lot of things with it. But he took what was his, and he went out, and he squandered it. And then he realized something. When he took what he had, that's all he had. He had lost his source. He walked away from Daddy. No longer was Daddy paying the electricity bill. How many of y'all, I remember when Melissa thought, she was she she got 18. She gonna move out on her own. She went one semester and she said, Mama, can I come back? <laughs> My bedroom's still back there. You know what? When you go out and you discover what it's like to do it on your own and you're paying your own bills and you're buying those groceries, you're like, whoa. All that that all those Doritos I ate, didn't think nothing about it. Man, those things are like four fifty a package. You go home to mama just to eat some snacks. <laughs> I, my, yeah, they, they know they're going to find a my house. John, he, every prayer meeting, he goes starts digging through my, that's, we, we're getting too close. We're all family. Everybody just comes, goes through everything, you know. 
But you know what? There's so, there is a benefit of staying at the Father's house. There's benefits of staying in the Father's house. Mom and Daddy's paying the bills. Mom and Daddy is your provider, and not only that, but they're your protector. This young man went out there, and he didn't have a father to go and ask advice. They didn't have text messages. They didn't have telephones. They, I don't even know if they had smoke signals yet. I mean, I don't know. I think that was American Indians that did that. But all I know is he's out in a foreign land, and he can't get to Daddy. I don't think camels go that fast, but all I know is he's out there. He lost his source. He spent his money. Now, it's interesting to me why this young man didn't know what to, how to do that money. Why did the inheritance get lost? See, I'm going to talk about a scripture that really got this all started with me, and it really kind of started Bobby. Man, I'm thanking God, Bobby. You're not pre- I'm not letting you up here because I'm stealing all your messages. I was saying this to somebody. There was this, I said, uh, the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children, and Bobby corrected me. There's benefit doing time, Bobby. He, he knows the word, and that's what's awesome. He's not ashamed. He, 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 learned, he used his time. He didn't just serve time. He made the time serve him. That's a wise person. But he said to me, he said, um, no, the, I think it says um, he'll leave an inheritance for his children's children. It'll go down to the third generation. The father, son, grandson, father, child, third generation. A good man leaves an inheritance that, go, that doesn't just end with the child he gives it to. But this stage here, this young man, father worked all that money. He gave it to him, and then he went out and he lost it. If he had children, he had nothing to give it to the third generation. I want to talk about how we're going to get this out, why it's dying with our kids today, and what we're going to do about it to be able to get this to to our children's children. How about y'all? Now, we got some people in here already got grandchildren. You blink your eye and you're a grandparent. And so some of us, our kids are, are kind of grown, and we think, well, I can't do it. Oh, I got the chance now. I can, that's why grandmas and grandpas are so good. We get to do it again. <laughs> we very practice on the kids. We get pretty good at it by the second. But for some reason, this father, something was lacking. I found a scripture that said this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, for thereby it is a profit to them. If you give somebody money and they have no wisdom, you know what they do? It'll destroy them. Do you know that? If you got a problem with alcohol and you get the lottery, all you're going to do is buy more and more expensive alcohol. If you got a drug problem and you get money, it don't solve your drug problem. You're just going to buy more higher-powered stuff and have parties and get all your friends on it. Money does not, y'all know this, they call it the curse of the lottery. People divorce, people fight, people commit suicide that inherit millions of dollars. Kids today, people, uh, uh, parents can build a business. Y'all have seen this happen. You've heard about it different times. That a father, let's say a father that came out of the Depression and, and money was precious, and he builds a business out of his garage or his barn. You know, he just starts building a rocking chair, and all of a sudden, I like that rocking chair. Make me a rocking chair. Before you know it, he's got a big furniture company, and it's millions of dollars, and the man goes to work at 5 o'clock in the morning, didn't get home at 9 o'clock at night. He's working 10, 12-hour days, and he builds a fortune. And then what happens? He passes away, and his son inherits, and what happens many times? They lose the company. I know that happened with us. With, uh, I worked for Mary Crowley, Mary C. Crowley with Home and Tears and Gifts. And Mary C. Crowley started that business out of her garage, selling little home goods out of her garage, and started bringing people, and made it a huge business. When I went to work for her, there's a multi-million dollar company. And her son, Don Carter, was out there going, flying all over in his jets. And, and we went out there, and she took all of her managers out to his big house one day. And he's got this big mansion, and at that time he owned the Mavericks, and he owned all this stuff. But when Mary died, it went to her son. Do you know today there is no home interiors and gifts? It's been, it, it sold off here, sold off here, sold off here. It just started crumbling, and they end up selling it off. They've got different names for it. I, I just think about that with Mary. What happened that her son Don did not carry on her legacy? He got an inheritance, but he didn't know what to do with it, apparently. I mean, there's other factors, I'm sure, but um, and there's another scripture here in Proverbs. He says, an inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof will not be blessed. 
when you get something given to you that you didn't earn, it's not as valuable to you. I seen I had a young woman I talked to lately who had inherited all this money from a, 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 a grandparent. And I think her part after the after everybody got their share and everybody, she ended up with like free and clear seventy thousand dollars after the after the taxes. You know, okay. She was like eighteen when she got the money. When I'm talking to her, she's like twenty. And you know what? She didn't have a dime. She didn't have a car. She didn't have her own apartment. She's sleeping on somebody's couch. Seventy thousand dollars. Because she got an inheritance, but she didn't have wisdom with it. It's not enough for you to work yourself to death to give something to your kids and leave off the weightier matters. Because what good is money if they don't know what to do with it? That father that goes to work and worked all those hours building that business, he might have been making all this money and mama was taking those kids shopping and they got new iPods for birthday and they got new uh, car on their 16th birthday. They got all this stuff, but you know what they didn't get? They didn't get their daddy's attention because he was too busy making money. And so he didn't take them to work with him and show them what it takes to run a business. He, you know, we say, well, money don't grow on trees. Well, you know what? In their world, it does. It just, you know, they'll say, well, you ain't got no money? Just write a check. How many of your kids ever said that? I say, we can't go talk at Costa. How many we get no money? Well, write a check. Magic paper. It don't matter. Just write a check. Because somehow or another, we've not transferred the knowledge on about money to our kids. We don't start young enough. And I, I'm not going to, I sound like I'm preaching hard, ain't it? But I hope he's going to get a little better. Y'all start smiling here. We're going to get better at this. That's the, I mean, I'm not saying I did everything right. So that's why I've got some, some stuff here. But I'm going somewhere. It's going to be more gooder, said the redneck section. We have to let them know, a father, if he wants his ki kids to carry on the business, they had to know that he just didn't wish it into existence. Money don't grow on trees. But there's actually diligence that has to be done. D uh, 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 discipline has to be followed. They may have to miss some fishing trips. They may have to not sleep in. But if you give them the wisdom with the inheritance, then you'll, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And actually, every generation should get better, stronger, because every generation should start on a different level. Does that make sense? I can just talk about us because I am a generational blessing child. That's why I like to talk about it. I really don't like to talk about generational curses. And I, I personally, this is my thought, don't throw anything at me. I think that, that the Bible says that uh, he, Jesus nailed the curses to the tree. I don't think we're cursed today. Now, there's things that look like curses, but what it is, it's just natural consequences. The Bible says the sins of a father are visited upon his children. What does that mean? That means when a father's out there living a sorry life, his kids are experiencing it. It's visited on the children. They didn't ask for it. They didn't ask you to go out there and gamble the paycheck away. They didn't ask you to go get a, to go have a DWI and have to give all the money this month to get you. They, the sins of a father are experienced by the children. You're not in an island. Whatever we do affects somebody. So it's not like a curse. Back then they were cursed. It was do this, you're blessed. Do this, you're cursed. But we're not living in that. Thank God for grace. That was the inheritance. We got grace. I didn't even read that one. We got power. We got grace. We got all this stuff in the kingdom. We have the grace. But here's what I've experienced too in people. Just because you have it doesn't mean some people use it. We have talked about it at prayer meeting other night. I think it was Carol that said it. She said, it, yeah, this wasn't your exact words, but it's like we're living beneath our privilege many times. We don't even know we have an inheritance. We're living like we're poor when really he said you have all the riches of your father. Everything you need is in him. He is our provider. You just got to stay in the father's house to get it. You don't just don't run off there and say, I got this, daddy. I got it. Because we don't got it. Do you? I don't have it. I never want to leave my father. I'm so glad I can call on him. But there was another son in this story. There was the first son, went out and squandered his money. Now, what happened to him, you know, he came to himself and said, what am I doing? Because now, he don't, get this, he didn't have any job skills. You look at it. He didn't, you know what he got a job doing? Feeding pigs. And he, that somebody finally felt sorry for him, gave him a job feeding their pigs. 
And then he was so hungry that he said he, he, he wanted to eat the food that the pigs were eating. That's how low he got when he walked away from the father. And here his father was like the king. His father was rich. But because he had made this poor choice and went out there, he hit bottom. How many of y'all, I don't, even, don't even raise your hands. You left the father's house and you found yourself in a pig pen. We call it backslid. I mean, you just slid back. You had all this. You just like go downhill. Downhill's kind of fun. Wee! You know, just coast. But that crash at the bottom is not fun. We've done that. Have we? We've left the father's house and we go out there. And he came to himself and he goes, "What am I doing? The servants in my daddy's house has more than what I have. I'm gonna go back and just say, Daddy, I don't. I know I took what's mine. I already took my inheritance. I'm not. I can't. I'm not worthy to be a son. If you just let me come and work for you, he knew just the." Just to have a little taste of the father was better than all the world could give him. So he came home, and we know the story. The father was looking for him the whole time. Has anybody heard from my son? Anybody know what happened to my son? I haven't heard from him. I'm worried about him. He knew his son was weak. He probably laid in bed and go, I don't know what he's doing. He don't, I didn't teach him any job skills. I just let him home, and he just sit around, and I, I didn't really teach him any wisdom. I, and I, I don't know what's happened to him. So when he was looking, when he seen his fa- he said he seen his son coming a far way off. He ran down the hill to him. And he didn't wait for him to get home and clean up. No, he ran down, and he put a robe and walked him back home. Do you know, no matter how far you run, God will not only let you come back, but he will run down there and walk home with you. He won't even make you do it by yourself. Some people go, oh, I can't ever come back to God. I'm too far. It's okay. He'll come to you. He said, you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You go one inch and he goes a million miles. My mother wrote a song that says, he reached down further than I could reach up. Isn't that good? You see, he will go to you and walk with you. He's a faithful father. But when you get home, there was another son. And you know where the son was at? He hears this party going on, music, and daddy's saying, Ooh, it's okay, we're going to have a grand old, real party. He thought party was out there. No, that ain't party. People call party today, getting high and doing all this stuff. But let me tell you what, the real party is what we're doing here. Woo, there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. <laughs> Boy, that was not in my notes, but that felt good. That's a song. Y'all know that song? But you got to do the hands in the air. Throw your hands in the air just like you just don't care. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. And there's no hangovers. <laughs> and it's free. It's the new one. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. That's not in my notes. Praise God. We're having fun today. I'm getting loose now. I'm getting loose. My dad used to come home, Mama be gone. He'd go, ooh, Connie got loose. <laughs> She's at Walmart again. <laughs> Connie got loose. Woo! I'm getting loose. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. There was a second son. He heard the partying going on. You know where the son was at? This was interesting to me. He was out in the field with the servants, working like a slave. Gary says, I work him like a Hebrew slave, but I don't really think that's true. They had to stomp straw without any straw or whatever. This son was not acting like the son of royalty. This son was living beneath his privilege. It's like somebody having, somebody put a million dollars in the bank for you and you never make a withdrawal. Do you know there's Christians just like this prodigal son, not the the older son? He's out there slaving in the field like a common servant trying to please his father. He said, Father, how come you're giving a party to a little brother who spent all his money? He said, your money is what he said. He said, your money. Because <laughs> it was daddy's money, wasn't it? You don't have to give a kid inheritance. It's daddy's money. And he said, he, your son went out, my younger brother, that heathen, he went out and squandered your money on The Old Testament word is harlots. We'll use that word. That's the word. Don't go any further, brother. I see that look on your face. Those little eyes just disappear when he's got something mean he wants to say. (laughs) Meanness in them eyes. He was out there trying to, he said, Daddy, he goes, 
you're doing this for my brother, but he goes, you've never even had a party for me. And he goes, I've never left you. I've been out there working. I'm doing all this stuff right. Ooh, you know what that is? That's self-righteous Christians, but not just self-righteous. This is kind of where we were. But what gets you to be self-righteous is when you live a salvation by works. When you think that you do things to please God, I don't know what's worse, to think about walking around like I used to think sometimes that God was looking down at me like this. There she goes again. That I was displeasing to him. I was always afraid to displease God. I don't know what's worse, to walk around thinking I'm displeasing him or walk around thinking I am pleasing him. Ooh. I thank God. Here's the man in the, y'all know the story, the man in the temple to pray. The Pharisee came in there and he said, I... I can't stand it. i got to get up and walk around. It's all right. I, it's therapy. It's therapy. He said, I thank God I'm not like this sinner over here. Because I pay tithes of all I have. I give to the poor. I fast often. And, and this man over here just saying, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the, Lord, the Bible says that this, the, the sinner man that just was humble went down justified. And this man didn't. See, this older brother was doing what a lot of religious people are doing. They don't even know who they are. They're living beneath the privilege. They don't realize their daddy is the king, and he loves them, and he wants them to have fun. He told him, he said, son, I would have killed the fatted calf for you any day of the week. You just didn't ask. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. We don't expect it. You know why? Because we think we're not pleasing God. So if we're not pleasing, he's probably not going to give it to me. And we used to think the only time I could pray and expect to get it is if I did everything right that week. Well, I went to church. I read my Bible. I read my chapter. I prayed a little bit. Uh, I was on the way to work. But I did pray and check off the, okay, maybe he'll, maybe I can ask him and maybe he'll do it. The father said, I would have done it just because you're my son. See, the Lord, he's already given you the inheritance. He's waiting for us to use it. He's waiting us to get up and do something with it. If you want to have a party, a Holy Ghost party, just ask him. That's what we do around here. We're not expecting just some dead, boring service. We're like, hey, we can have this. Some churches don't know you can raise your hands and clap and act silly in church and laugh. And you can wear blue jeans and be a pastor. Woo! Hey, our daddy's the king. He makes the rules. He picked us. He picked Shane. Woo. Woo, you're safe. He picks us. He loves us. We're his babies. He's the king. He don't want us out there plowing in the field going, oh, I just got to do this. No, he said, I've done done the work. It is finished. There is now an inheritance laid up for you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you where, the, where I am. There you may be also. And he was not talking about heaven. He was talking about living in the kingdom. He says, now, you're not just a citizen of Texas or the United States of America. You're a citizen of a heavenly country. And now you can just run right in the throne room and say, hey, Dad, what's up? What do you need, son? Let me just curl up on your lap. I just need some love today. I did this bo- this, my boss at work just beat me up. I just need to know that I'm okay. I just need to hear you say, I love you, baby. And you know what he does? He said, I love you, child. Fear not, my child, for I know how to take care of what belongs to me. He will give you assurance. And then if you've been bad, he might sit there too. Now, son, we need to talk about this. Because, boy, if you keep running that street, them 18 wheelers out of there, you're going to get run over. Or, son, if you keep on trying to use that to calm your nerves, you might get addicted, and it's not fun when you're addicted. See, he's not trying to beat us up, oh, you sorry sinner. No, he's called, John just said it. He said, I call you saints. And one of my sayings is, I'm a saint even when I ain't. That's why we have the five-fold ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, because saints ain't perfect. We're going to get to that perfection. Ooh, i got to get fast. Because I'm leaving for South Padre Island with three of my grandbabies. Next year, I may have all of my grandbabies with me. I'm going to have my mama. Woo! Oh, this is so good. Paul, is it good? Good to me. I'm having fun now. I, I, when I, see, I, I, I had to walk to get anointed. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. When I get free, it's like going to Walmart. <laughs> Every generation should start stronger. If you're leaving an inheritance for your kids, they don't have to start where you started. See, this is what happens spiritually. I'm going to throw this in there. This is what happens when churches split. 
when churches split, it's just like a family of when a son says, I'm going to leave you. When they split, they had to go over there and rent a building, go buy a sound system, go build some altars, if they believe in altars, and they do all this stuff and start all over like they're nothing. they got to start over. That was never God's plan, but it is his plan for us to grow. Daddy said bees don't split, they swarm. Daddy was a bee man. But a bee, a hive, a, 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 a new queen will rise up, and they'll just swarm over here, and they'll swarm over here, and they all work together, but they're, they're in little different little houses because it's got crowded but the truth is they still all work together. And they pro- cross-pollinate and all that. See, that's what happened to the church. Everybody started splitting. It's amazing. Little church here, little church. So you had to start all over. But what happens, we're supposed to uh, pass on something. And when one day John might decide, I just think I need to have a church over there in Marietta where he works. Well, you know what? We'd say, okay, let's take some. Go over there. Y'all help him. We'll give you some of our extra chairs out there in the deal. We'll help you get a sound system. We would help him because he'd be part of the family. It's a family inheritance. Everybody don't have to stay in the same house. I don't, I'm looking for people to rise up and move on out and take some people. That's the way I want to grow. I don't want to have to big, build bigger buildings and spend millions of dollars of the people's money that we could be working with the poor. I'd rather you go on down the road and let's help you and you start another one. And we'll all fellowship once a month. We'll just go down there and rent something big and have one service together. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, we'll come out there under the pavilion. You see, that God has got this plan. It was always generational blessing. It was always supposed to be the children's children. It was always supposed to continue going, not stop. But see, if that son had never went home, he'd never, if he didn't come back to the father's house, he could have lived and died and been the father's son, and it wouldn't have helped him at all. He had the name, but he was out there by himself. God does not want us to split and run off. He wants us to stay together because it's important to who you're connected to. Because if you're not connected, you won't get the inheritance. Elijah and Elisha was a good story about this. Elisha seen Elijah and seen something in him he wanted. He's seen anointed on that man, and he sold everything he had. He's killed his oxen. He used his, uh, and made a wood out of their whatever and, and had a big old party and, and fed, the, fed everybody. And he took off following this man of God. Why? Because there was something he wanted. John was all over my message this morning. He said he'd follow Brother Art around and do what Brother Art did. Didn't he say that? If he wanted to be like him. Well, Elisha wanted to be like Elijah, so that's what he did. He followed him around, and what he was doing, he was watching him as Elijah did great miracles. But one day, Elisha went on up to heaven, and he dropped that mantle, which was the signification of the anointing. It was an inheritance. Not only did Elisha get what he could get for himself, but he also got what Elijah had. He got the double portion. That is an inheritance. That's what a double portion is. See, my kids, if we don't spend it all vacationing, they might get some money one day, but they'll not only get what we've got, but they'll get what they've got. It's a what? It's a double portion. That's the inheritance we're supposed to be leaving. Every generation should be better, even in the natural or in the spiritual, same way. See, I have it both ways with us. I've always said that I couldn't really take credit for a lot of the things that I've done and accomplished because I said I started already blessed. See, my mom and daddy, I got the inheritance. I, I was born on St. Patrick's Day, but I always said I wasn't born lucky. I was born blessed because I had family that gave me what? Faith in a faithful God. And with faith, all things are possible. So I got an inheritance at my parents. I watched them. I lived in the house with them, and I seen what they had. So when I was able to go out, I already knew how to be a wife. I already knew what to look for in a husband. I knew I wasn't going to pick an angry man. I seen it one day. I, see, because I watched my daddy. A lot of girls don't, they, their pickers are broke, like when somebody said. They don't know how to pick a good man because they don't have a good role model. They don't recognize anger. I was dating this guy. I thought I would marry him. He was, well, almost as good looking as you, honey. But you know what? One day we was out on a date, and we just left church. We left this big church in Fort Worth, and we got lost. And I got on a CB radio back in the day. And I said something to somebody, and he got so angry, he took his fist and went, boom, into that dash. I mean, just crash that dash. And I remember going, I scooted over a little bit. You know what? That was the end. Oh, it took me a while to break it off completely, but I knew he was not the one. No, he chased me, honey, for years. I'm sorry. He was still chasing me. But the truth is, I recognized it. I had an inheritance my father what to look for in a man. I I didn't need a fixer-upper. I wanted to move in ready, man. I didn't want to be one of those women trying to find a fixer-upper. Let me tell you, you need to get yourself fixed up, man, before you look for a woman. 
Women, get yourself fixed up. Get complete in Christ. Get your inheritance and say, I've got a, my father's the king. He's the great counselor. He's the healer. He's the provider. Get yourself complete in Christ. That's the name of our singles group here, complete in Christ. Because if you're complete, you won't be looking for somebody because I need you. I need you to complete me. And then there's nothing any bad worse than living with a needy person. No woman respects, respects a needy man. It's the truth is. She wants a man that's strong that can pray for her and take care of her and her children. And a man don't want some little needy woman. Oh, do you love me? Do you love? Well, I, I still have that need. But the truth is, when you're complete, I can go into that marriage and say, what can I do for you? And he says, what can I do for you? And your kids see it. It's a generational blessing. I see it with my mother and daddy. The daddy, they've been married 50 Two years when he passed away. Mama was 14 years old when, when she married my daddy. And you know what? I was, she was 16 when she had me. But it's a generational blessing. I got to see them. I didn't just see them get the benefit. See, this is what happens with people. Some people like the man that have the business. His kids get the benefit of the money, but they don't get to see it up close and personal because daddy don't take them to work with them. They don't make them get up with them early in the morning. They let them sleep in. They're not willing to show those kids what it took. But my daddy, he drug us to church. That's the only drug problem we had. He drug us to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, when Wednesday night and Friday night prayer meeting. And you know what happened? I listened to my pastor, an old man that was a smart man who said, was a teacher of God. Tom, I was 18 years old. I had a man that had been to seminary six years, and he told me, he said, you know more of the Bible than I know in six years of seminary. You know why? I was born already with an inheritance. I sit at the feet of the man because my daddy went to church. He didn't just go to church and leave me home me to church and not only that but I got to hear my daddy pray I got to see my daddy sing I got to watch my daddy praise God I got to see him go pray for the people anoint them with oil with the sick and see them recover see I seen it up close and personal a lot of people are trying to pass religion on to their God their children and they just have religion let me tell you why I'm gonna write something on this board it's like this if you want your kids to get the inheritance, they're going to have to see the real deal. That is the inheritance. You don't just hear about it. They can get the blessing, but that's not good enough. They need to know why you got the blessing. They got to see you forgive people. They need you to say, Daddy, sorry. Mama, sorry. How many times have we done to our kids? Must I've had to go to you many times, Hannah, baby, and said, I didn't handle that quite right. Crystal, I wish I'd have done it different. Back when you was 11 years old when you first came to live with us. I wish I'd have done it different, baby. That's all I can say. But you know what? They see us do that. They need to see us forgive. They need to see why we're successful. Let me tell you, it's not just our, my daddy give it to us, but then we've given it to our kids. And not just our kids. They're not our birth daughters. Bobby's not our, he's got matching shirts with Gary. They're trying to do this Twinkie thing here. You bought it for him? Okay. But you know what? It's because they seen us. They didn't see us perfect. David said, this is the perfect thing. I've got to get to this real quickly. This was, this was um, David's prayer for his son. I want to read. This is, this is so sweet. He was fixing to die. And he said, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of your father. Number one, he said, I want you to know God. Is that what you want for your kids? Is that, that's what I want you to know for you. It's not just natural kids. It's also spiritual kids. I know the son of your the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches the hearts and understands all the imaginations we talked about of the thoughts. He understands the logic and reason of man. He said, For the Lord, but if you will seek him, he'll be found of you. He said, Know him, serve him with a perfect heart and willing mind, and seek him. That's what he wanted. He said, I want him to have a perfect heart. What does that mean? When I thought about this, I thought my daddy had a perfect heart. My daddy was not a perfect man. John back there, you, you worked with my dad, didn't you? He, didn't you work? Yeah, you did. And, and so uh, daddy wasn't a perfect man, but I'll tell you what he did have. He had a perfect heart. You know what that is, a perfect heart? The word perfect there means, means complete, 100% sold out. My daddy had a perfect heart toward God. He was 100% to God. That didn't mean his body. You know your body will never be perfect. That's why we're going to get a new body. And our mind is being perfected, and that's what we're doing today. We're learning. We're changing. But our spirits are being made perfect. He said, by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. He sees you as perfect. That means complete, 
reached the goal fulfilled by one offering he has. Now, the problem we have is in the soul realm. That's our mind. That's what we're doing here today. Your kids, this is the will, see you. This is our life. Let's say this is spouse. I'm going to take, I could stand here for a few minutes. Kids, ooh, I'm going to be healed. Okay, let's say job. We have all these spokes in our wheels, don't we? Supplies the money. We have church. We have uh, recreation. We have other things. We have family, have all kinds of things. This is the spoke of a wheel. Our kids are seeing this every day. Now, what I find out, I realize all this stuff here, one of the biggest things here is this one right here. A lot of people put this right here in the middle. You know why? Because this is how you take care of your spouse. This is how you take care of all the things that camps your kids want to go to. This is what you give the church. Recreation costs money. All that fishing and hunting ain't free. Them boats. Ooh, lordy. I said, he's talking about my shoes. I said, how many shoes could I pay for one gun? Y'all, y- uh, other women use that one? Yeah, yeah. He gets quiet real fast. Um, uh, what was over here? I had another one. But anyway, <laughs> um, house, house things, all the bills. Let's just say, you know. But the thing is, it's real easy to do this because we need this. It's like makes the world go round in a way, but that's not true. If you do this and you're working here so you can give your kids everything, your wife everything, pay the bills, go have some fun every now and then, give a few dollars to church, and you, th- this becomes this real fast. And you've got to be careful because this is where you will not leave an inheritance by doing this because what your kids really need, see, what other people do, they put God in the middle of the church business. God and church is it's just a spoke in their will. You know why? For one thing, they don't want God messing with the rest of this. God is one spoke, and they combine it with church. That's not right. You are the church. This is just the church house where you come and learn. This is not where God belongs on Sunday morning or or Wednesday night. This is where God has to happen right here. If you're going to have a perfect heart, it's because God is in the center. And then... It's like this, God, what job do you want me to take? God, how do you want me to spend my money? Well, honey, no, we're going to, the first tithe, always. My mom and daddy taught us how to handle money. You know what, we had, not only, you know, we lived on, we was born a little old dirt street on Fletcher Street. By the time I was six years old, we moved up. My daddy went to work for the railroad. We thought we were rich. We got on a street that had pavement. Okay? And from there, us, because we learned some things, we didn't just get, they didn't give us any money when we got married. And we, they were, didn't have a lot of money. But we, we had more than money. We had knowledge. We had wisdom. We had some skills that had been passed on to us. We, got, we had some work ethic. Ooh, that's a big one that's lacking today. Why? Because his mama made him go to work. They were dirt poor. He had to wash dishes for his lunches. He was sweeping uh, floors in a beauty shop until he was 11 years old. Just have any money. His money man. Because see, that was sad, but also was a great inheritance that's made him to be the man he is today. He's always he's a he's a hard worker, anything he does. So with that, before you know it, our house is twice as big as mom and daddy's. We have the farm daddy always wanted. He could come out there, put his bees on our land, he could get put a little calf out there, he had bought some cows, put on he come worked our garden. He got the inheritance through his children. Didn't have to pay the taxes, didn't have to pay the bills, but that was a blessing to my daddy. And not only that, now our kids, Joda has got a house bigger than us. And not only that, they've got another, their first house, they still own it. You know, it's a rent house. Oh, this thing works. Not just in the natural, but why they got that was not, we hadn't died, we didn't give them any money. What we did give them, Melissa, what we gave, while you're here today, and while you have what you have, and Crystal, you're getting yours all back because you, you were the prodigal, but you come back now, baby. You just wait. He's already putting a ring on your finger. You're getting your babies back, and she's got clean because she got off. She's a prodigal, got out there in the pig pen, got on drugs, and lost her kids. But she's here today, and God's going to provide it. She come back to the father's house, and he ran to get you, didn't he? She's already got a job. She's already working things out, and she's getting her children with her husband. We're going to let her have her kids because she wasn't fit. She had drug problems, but she's clean and sober today. 
That's what happens when you go back to the Father's house. But if you want to give inheritance for your kids, you can't fake them out. They live with you. Your co-workers, your family, those close to you, they know you. You don't have to be around very, somebody very long. You know God's just a spoke in their will. Oh, yes, I know Jesus. John's mother says, is John, is she a Christian? Is she a Christian when you're dating her? No, it's not about being a Christian. Everybody says they're Christians today almost. No, it's not a Christian. It means what really Christian? Are they anointed ones? Do they have God to sit in their heart? Because then they'll know how to spend that money and they'll have plenty of money to, to make their will go around. But you leave one spoke out of here, even if you never get any recreation, one spoke causes a, you don't have a very smooth life. But if you can get this right here, your life will go rolling on down the road. And you'll take your kids. See, i got places to go, people to see before I die. I want to I wanna get my spokes in, in order. I want to learn everything I can. I want to have a perfect heart because I serve a perfect God, and he can do all things. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He'll help you pay your bills. He'll help you pick the right spouse and get along with them and, and forgive them when they're crazy and crazy kids. Uh, recreation. And you'll know what church to go to. You won't just, well, any church will do We just because Grandma went to that church. Uh, now, let me tell you something. Don't assume just because Grandpa was a Christian and Grandma are you that your kids will be. We're losing our kids. They're going off to college and they're asking hard questions. And they're not bad questions. How do you really know that Jesus is the only way? How do you know he even lived? Oh, they're asking some hard questions because they're smart kids. And you know why? Because they're sick of fake religion. They're bit tired of people talking about Jesus and living like the devil. I had a kid tell me, he said, I'll tell you why I left Christianity. Because there ain't no happy Christians. That's his word. There is no happy Christians. I said, well, you didn't live in my house. Well, we were happy Christians. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Boop, boop. Well, we used to sing them songs. You know what? We had fun. I'm, I'm missing the beach. Wait we went to the beach, my daddy got, went out there. We had fun. We had fun with my grandpa. My grandma, I tell you what, this, this is the thing. is, This is what you want. This is the inheritance. We have the kingdom. We got to pass it on to our children's children. And it's not enough just to go to church and show them what Jesus can do and let them have the benefits. You need to live it. You need to show them what it's like to forgive, how you was able to walk through these things. Does that make sense to y'all? Because let me tell you what the reward is. It's the thing that makes it around. There's only one thing that can really be perfected in the Bible is fruit. He said that per, oh, I, could, there's a whole, I have a whole page of them. It's perfecting your love. And he says, then he says, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. I've got scriptures that said the inheritance of the children is the peace of God. In a crazy world, you can have love and you can have peace. And there's nothing like that inheritance. It makes the world go round. Money does not make the world go round. God will give you money. He will take care of your needs if you'll put him first. You put him in the center of your life. You can't, you'll know it when you're around somebody that God is the center of their life. They don't have to preach to you. They don't quote a bunch of scriptures. They just, he's the essence of who they are. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's irresistible. It's irresistible. It's not because you're perfect. It's because your heart. In the New Testament, perfect meant to put in order, mend, to make complete, equip, train, and prepare. He said, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Let me read what that says. It means to be restored, in order, mend, be complete, equipped, trained, prepared. That's what Paul said. I want you to be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Oh, aren't you glad you're in the Father's house today? All you got to do is be born into this family. The, the, the Gentiles were adopted into the family of God, and now we're born again into this family, and you've got the kingdom now, and you've got heaven later.